Hello everyone and welcome to Zach's Garage. Today we have a car sitting in the garage which is very special indeed. Now, since I was a little boy I've always loved cars, you can probably imagine why, but there is always that one vehicle that is the pinnacle of motoring. You've got the Koenigseggs which are crazy fast and amazing money and all this and all that. But in terms of sheer outright performance, there is one car in mind, and that is Formula One. Now through this room, there is something that not a lot of you guys get to see that often, because I like to keep something in the collection private. Well, behind you now is a 2004 Williams Formula One car. Now. The Williams Formula 1 car is permanently stationed here. This is an FW26, it's from 2004, and has the V10, it's nuts. I please beg of you all to go check out footage of this car racing. But today, this is not the car we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about that. The TDF, the world's first customer buyable, easily runnable Formula 1 car for any track use. Now this car is a 2011 Marussia Formula 1 car and it was bought by the company TDF, Tour de Force. They have left the car with us so I can explain to you guys what they do because actually it's pretty damn cool. The most important thing you know about this video is it's not going to be all technical speaking about what this car was in 2011. We're going to be talking about what it is today. Now, they left the car with us like this, but I sort of want to show you guys what's underneath some bits. So, I found a ratchet Allen key, and we're going to take stuff apart. I don't think they'll mind. Meh. If you leave a car with me, who knows what will happen. So, I'm going to go get a tool, and I'll be right back. Stay right where you are. And I'm back. So, we have this ratchet Allen key. Very helpful. means we can undo bolts very quickly. So... Um, I'm going to take a guess and say that if we want to get to the engine bay, you're probably going to get to this bit here. Um, I'm genuinely completely guessing here. There is no one here. It's just me with a ratchet and John, the photographer. Um, so, that's tightening. That's not a good start. Tell you what, instead of watching me do this, let's hit to a time lapse of me attempting to take a Formula One car apart. important though so there we go um, so yes after many screws have been taken off you can now see the engine um, you'll notice some certain differences the fact that it's turbocharged and little tweaks you'll also notice gold no that's not from oh look it looks like a McLaren F1 the gold is actually a really good help with heat system in terms of heat management things like that um, the exhaust I think is quite cool. If you've seen any classic Ferraris, you'll notice the exhaust is white. That is also for heat management. Um, as I said, we're not going to get into the technical details today, just because we're going to go up to their factory, their engineers are going to talk us through it, and they've offered to let me drive it. Well, there's a mistake, because I don't even know how to put the thing back together again. So. But, on to the main event. This car can start with three buttons. So, uh, let's start a Formula 1 car. Just a quick note to, like, AMG, F1, Williams, McLaren. I don't think it's that hard to make a Formula 1 car. I mean, I've taken it apart, and whilst I was doing it, my cameraman has made, well, this. Basically, what you guys have made, you can see it's got 
full rain tyres, just in case you need it. It's got the air scoopy bits to scoop air. It's got a Formula 1 steering wheel, even a helmet, with the correct safety devices. I mean, how hard is it? You know, it's, it just seems a bit excessive. So now the first thing that we need to do, because the car is sitting on carpet, um, basically we need a heat shield for the exhaust because it gets super, super hot as you guys can imagine. Um, now, they say you can start it one hand and you can run it one hand, but realistically you'd want two. One to sit in the car, start it, it literally just takes two buttons, and then the others to put the wheels on. We'll probably take some wheels off it just to show you how easy it is, but uh, things that I need to do, grab a steering wheel off our Formula 1 car over here, so I this guy won't mind, he doesn't look like he's in any rush to go anywhere so we're going to take the steering wheel uh, the most important thing is we know not to pull these paddles because otherwise they're going to destroy our beautiful Formula 1 car and not the Williams one between it so first of all, lock the steering wheel on that's very important because Oh, I'm not going to drive it. Um, then we need to get the plug-in for it. There are two battery plug-ins. This is actually just to maintain power for the car. Because we're not driving it, we're going to leave this plugged in. So this is the external battery. So, uh, it plugs into one of these things. Uh, I think that's it. There we go. It says it's green. Then we move to the back because the Formula 1 car doesn't have a battery because, well, the battery is far too heavy. We have a big silver case, which is actually over here. Oh, that's not me straining, just for comical purposes. In here is the Formula 1 car battery. So that will connect to help start the car. As you've noticed, I have still done all of this myself. So that plugs in to this connector back here. That means the car now has full power running through it. It's not heating up anything yet. So you've got P1, P2 and start. P1 is the first switch. Let's head over here. You're actually going to go round the other side. Now, we're going to cut this part into segments because noise purposes, it makes a lot of noise for a long period of time. So this is the P1 switch. This switch is on the ignition and starts the compression of the car. It takes a while. There we go, and ends with a little fart at the end. So, now that is done, you have to crank the car to gain oil pressure for four to seven seconds, so I do it for about five and a half seconds. This is where it starts sounding funky. You will notice that the screen is now completely switched on, and underneath that button there is a little button. So, are you ready? <laughs> now, I know that was for six seconds, but deal with it. Next switch is the P2. That switches off the coils, and then, well, then the noise begins.
seen the bit that you probably all came here for. You're probably all gone, but the people who are still remaining, I'm going to show you some rather cool bits from our made up little Formula 1 car here. To show you how light things are, this is the rear wheel from the Formula 1 car. This is a wheel and tyre, so it's got the rim, it's got the tyre. This is their travel tyre, so this is, you couldn't race on this anymore, but this is the same Pirelli that they would race on a wet tyre. But, to give you an example, using one finger, well, I'm going to use this hand to balance it, but there you go. It is the lightest thing. I wish I could show you how light this thing is, but it's nuts. I mean, I could just, I could hold this for days. But that's the rear wheel. If we go to the front, well, it keeps getting lighter. That, I just, I can't joke about this. I mean, the Koenigsegg, for instance. That Koenigsegg, the carbon wheels for those are ridiculously light, but the tyres make them a little bit heavier. This is just so light. I mean, if you want more, the rear cowling for the engine. Look at this. This is, I, I know I can't emphasize this, but I'm not even trying there. It's just not heavy. <laughs> Looks like plastic, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Um, we got some more Schneiben carber here. Look at this. I mean, it's just, it, it looks so flimsy. It's terrifying. I, it just absolutely nuts. I mean, as I said to you guys before, this video is more about just showing some cool bits about this car. Let me get more technical about it. Um, then we'll go down to theirs and they'll talk us through it. But if we look here, there's been a few modifications to the engine, actually quite a large amount. But they say that this car will perform to about 85% of what it was racing at when it was in the peak of its career. So you can buy one of these and race it on a track day as a Formula 1 car. It's nuts. Now, obviously, the more interesting bits, uh, noise limits. As people who know who are watching my channel, track days have pretty stern noise limits, 105 decibels generally. They have a clip-on exhaust kit for this, which when you go to a track day, makes it comply with those. I mean, can you imagine sitting in your Fiesta ST, ragging it around Donington, and then this thing comes past you at a billion miles an hour, while some guy's smoking a cigarette outside. It's just so cool. Everything's so cool out of it. But... We've got the wing here. Now there are so many different additions you can do to this car. Obviously the full car is completely customizable when you buy one. Um, you can have it as massive aero wings, you can have as slippery as possible. There's, there's endless things you can do, but obviously this wing is pretty narrow, um, especially if you look at the 2004 car that we've got. Um, this thing looks pretty crazy. Um, and then you've got certain things like, uh, well, the massive amount of carbon fibre, obviously carbon being the lightest material possible, it's obviously what they would use. Um, you've got the seat, well, well, that is actually not the seat. This is where the seat holding goes. So, depending on who's driving, they will have a mould that literally clips into there that goes around them, so when they're sitting on it, it basically, it fits them. So it means they can scoop in, scoop out, depending on who's driving it. Now, it's not like a Le Mans race where the driver's getting in and out, it's just one driver for the whole race. I know you guys have probably known this, but anyway. Um, furthermore, we have quite interesting bits like these jacks. To jack up this car is amazingly easy. So easy, in fact, I'm going to show you how easy it is with the help of my videographer. So, John, let's get to it. So one of the things you guys see in Formula 1 teams doing is lifting the cars up to do a pit stop. Well, believe it or not, I'm not a Formula 1 mechanic, but we are going to lift the car so I can show you some rather cool bits indeed. So John is going to stay at the front, lift the front just because it's the lightest part and I've got a bit more girth to me. Um, I'm going to lift the back, John's then going to come round, hold that down to stop it snapping up, then he's going to put the chocks underneath the car then we will join you back. So, I will see you guys in a couple of minutes. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Ready? You start, go on. Right, you down. So now, we're going to get these stands and put them underneath the car. So, now I'm going to take over from John, he's going to go to the front and we're going to lower it slowly to make sure it sits nicely on the stands. On three, yeah. okay. one, two, three.
So, there we have it. That car is now in the air, ready for guns and stuff to come on and swap tyres. But, for now we're going to change I'm going to show you how the actual mechanism works with removing the wheel. Now this is an actual Formula 1 wheel remover, if you will. Um, so this was actually taken from the car in when it, this was used whilst it was racing. Now, what a lot of people think, that these just click on and unscrew. Believe it or not, they're magnetic, which you will see by me clicking on here, and you'll hear a... That's now magnetised. It's also um, uh, held on by clips, but one little knock. Maybe a few more than one. Oh, it's going the wrong way. And we'll unscrew this, and... It's quite hard to do from this angle, but... There we go. So, that is how you remove a wheel, but let's get more into it. Now, I know I made that look awkward, but... If I was in a more clever position, that would have been very easy. But this is actually the cap that holds the wheel on. And this is the tool, and if you're hearing me when I said it's magnetic, I wasn't kidding. That is proper, proper magnetic. I can't get that off. The only way to do it is by bending the metal here, pressing it down, and it'll undo. But I can't do it here. So, let's go over to the wheel part. So this assembly is obviously the wheel. You've got the brake disc, you've got the brake calipers, and you've got the brake pads. Here, you've got this clip here, which when this goes over it, you can see it compresses. If I undo that, break that down. So, you've got the tool removed. This is the hub that sits on there. Once it's screwed on, that little popper clips up, means the wheel cannot come off. It is physically impossible for that, car to, that wheel to come off, unless obviously something snaps, which we've seen countless times in Formula One. You've got the wheel hub nuts, which go into the wheel themselves, which if we flip this, this wheel over, you will see it goes into any of those holes. Now the reason why those holes are there is because if you think about it in Formula 1, they're not lining it up, they're bosh on, bang on, and off they go. So there's so many options there, it just clicks straight on. Very, very clever indeed. Now, because I'm not joking around, because TDF, the guys aren't here, I'm not going to do anything fast and show you how it would all work in a, in a high-speed profession, also because I can't, but I will show you how it all goes sort of back together. So, if we get the tool, we'll unscrew this, we'll clip that on, that's now on. Now, if I flip this wheel over, you can see how that sits in there quite nicely and snug. Right, let's get this wheel back on I'm going to do it in a better position, so excuse me if you can't see that well. Right, so we're now going to get this on. I'm going to take it nice and easy. It's not my car. I know we like to joke around on this channel, but there will be no joking from now. So, the wheel gets clicked on. You'll see here, it spins on here. So, once I've lined that up, there we go, that wheel is now on. Using this, we clip it in, hand tight, break it off, the wheel's on. Considering I don't have a pneumatic gun, I'm not, you know, five stone and as fast as Usain Bolt on my feet, you can see how they get that done so bloody quickly. Now one of the great things about owning a TDF, yes it's fast, yes it's aerodynamic, I mean yes you'll have the most exciting toy of the track day, but it comes with checkerboard carbon, so it actually means you can play chess. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, I cannot wait to be able to get this car to a point in which we'll be able to drive it, and hopefully someone will be able to run us through all of the technical details and show you all of the wonderful things that I haven't gone over in this video. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys soon. Oh, and one other thing, John, mm -hmm. check me.